Hey, we're the Fords, and this is By Grace We Live. Welcome back for another week of By Grace We Live. We're happy you're here hanging out with us again. Ryan. How's your week going? <laughs> oh, not too bad. It. Uh, I guess technically this is what the, the end of the week. Yeah, yeah, we're about to jump into another a new week. One. Yeah. So, yeah. how was your full week from start to finish? How to go? It was all right. I'd say <laughs> that sounds super enthusiastic. <laughs> no, it's fine. Did it go by fast? Um, I don't know. I don't really remember if it felt like that. The weekend sure seemed to fly by, though. Well, yeah, I can that's, tell you that. that's always the case. Yeah, so. I feel like I, like, we get to this point, and I'm like, I don't remember anything I did this week. Yeah. So why do you keep asking me this? I'm I don't know. Kidding. I'm hoping maybe it'll spark my memory. <laughs> okay, well, do you have a high or a low that you'd like to share? Well, I definitely have some lows. Yeah. Well, a low. I had a it's couple probably, lows, too. One of them's probably the same as yours. Probably. Uh, Riley puking three times. Yeah. That, in like a 18 yeah. hour period start on friday yep puked twice on saturday right well one overnight it... so i guess oh, we don't yeah. really know when she puked yeah we woke up saturday morning to puke all in her kennel and spilling out of her kennel hopefully none of you are like eating while you're listening to this <sighs> that was yeah. lovely and then she puked again like saturday afternoon but mm -hmm. she's been fine since and yeah. so i don't know well, and she was, like, eating that whole time. Like, it's not like she, she stopped no other... eating and drinking or had, like, the scoots she... or anything <laughs> like that. She had no other symptoms. No other symptoms. Just... So it was just that she would puke. Yeah. I did tell you on Friday she was acting super lethargic, and she didn't eat that morning. And so I was a little worried, like, something was wrong, which I don't know if we've ever shared this on here, but she has seizures occasionally. And so... Sometimes I can tell when she's about to have one just based on how she's acting. So I thought that's what was about to happen, but she didn't have a seizure. And she, she'll she puke. She pukes when she, yeah, and sometimes poops. It's yeah. terrible. It's so sad. Um, but we don't, I don't think she had a seizure at all No, weekend, I don't think so, so either. She just maybe got into something outside or... Which is very likely. I mean, yeah, that could happen. She eats Aces, Aces is, poop. Yep. And uh, this other is what animals you come poop. here for. Yeah, all so the fun, dirty facts. The topic of this week's <laughs> conversation is doo doo. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, that was a low for sure. Yeah, uh, it was that was not fun. Definitely was, and it just made me feel sad for her. Yeah, and trying to think of a high. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really dig deep. I know it's so hard. <laughs> wow. Sometimes I just can't remember everything that's happened, which is sad. But we both have that problem. I know. We should journal more. Don't you journal? Isn't well, that what yeah, you... but it's not. I don't tip it. I don't journal my life, like yeah. all my, you know, the details of diary. my day. Yeah, Today, it's not that kind I did of this. a journal. And this is how I felt about it. <laughs> yeah, not. I not never that. did that either. Even as like a young kid, I was never like the. I didn't journal. Yeah. Well, what are your highs and lows? Did you have a good week? Yeah. My high was that we had some friends over for dinner this weekend. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah it was really fun. Um, yeah. One set of couple, one, how do I say that? It's two separate couples. One has a newborn baby. The other is expecting. And so it's just really fun, like, seeing them in this stage of life that we were in not too long ago. And then at one point, you and Miles are in the living room with our friends James and their baby girl. And it was just so sweet watching like him holding his baby and you're playing with miles and you guys were talking and i was like this is our life like they're just two guys with their babies <laughs> hanging out i don't know i just i got all sentimental and took pictures and you rolled your eyes at me but it was sweet so i say that's definitely the high one of my lows was for sure Riley puking. The other was that Miles had his first swim lesson oh. this week. So, like, we signed him up. Um, it was a Christmas present from my parents. So, uh, it's five weeks long, and this is, like, the beginner class. Like, this is let's splash around in the pool and sing songs is basically what we did. And, like, you know, the instructor taught us as the parents, like, how 
kids should enter the pool and like all that good stuff. He cried the entire time. Like literally we, I, he hadn't even touched the water. Like I just started walking into it and he just bawled his eyes out. And I don't know if it was just like a f- multiple factors. Like it's very loud in there. It's an enormous pool. It was a little cold. Like it's not like, you know, a bathtub. It's nice and warm. The only time he was happy is if he could see Ryan through the glass, um, mm-hmm. like in the hallway and he would, he would just go, dad, 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 dad. Like that's the only time he stopped crying. And then at the end, the instructor pulled out some toys for the boys to play with because it was just him and one other boy. And um, so he loved that. And I was like, maybe we should have started with the toys, but um, I'm assuming they've learned their lesson. Like if you do that, the kids won't give them back and then they're just even more upset. I don't know, but Mm -hmm. we have five weeks to figure out if he's going to enjoy it at all. And I mean, his instructor did say like, this is very normal. The first Mm -hmm. lesson, don't be upset. Cause the other little boy was crying too. And he was even like two and a half. He's older than miles. Uh, But it's just something new. And I thought he'd love it because he loves bath time and like splashing and playing the water, but but that's like an inch deep. Yes, as this was to... like uh, very scary for him. So yeah, should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just like, it's terrible because like I know he's safe. He doesn't know he's safe. So mm-hmm. I can tell him he's safe and like keep trying to reassure him, but he just kept crying, crying. And it was awkward because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do, but yeah. we survived. Yep. So moving on to a book club why don't you go ahead and fill us in on your latest reads um well still reading lord of the rings fellowship of the ring and that's going well i wonder what the fastest like time is that someone's made it through that book because it's a long book isn't it oh yeah but there's aren't the words very confusing too because it's like a lot of made up people and concepts and no i know more than any other made up story okay i would say i don't i mean i don't think so there are a lot of names and characters and things but yeah um i mean i don't think it's any worse than anything okay i've read i mean i've definitely read other books where sometimes um like i uh what was it the um hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy i think that's c.s lewis right not even close douglas adams well uh, wait. and it's not doesn't C.S. Lewis have like a space trilogy? Yes, that's but Out the, of the Silent Planet is the first book. Paralander is the second, and that hideous strength is I the third. I was trying. I was trying my best. Okay, just <laughs> pat on the back. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. I mean, it's like a almost like a satire. At least that's how it feels. I mean, I think that's how it was written. Okay. Um, but it it's just he uses such absurd names um, that it was hard to keep track. I see. Because it's it's like names you can't even pronounce so like like because there's so many random consonants and not enough vowels Mm -hmm. and so like you're not like i'm not actually reading that name in my head i'm just like seeing it and then moving on and so it's like hard to you're not absorbing it yeah yeah it's hard to like match that up with the context of who that person is or the planet name or whatever so So, lord of the rings Rings, is not like that for you i know because it's like sam frodo yeah Schmeagle. Yeah. Schmeagle. Isn't that what the guy turns into? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like there's no Schmeagle. SH, but it's just like, I don't know. They're not that hard to pronounce and they come up enough, at least so far, I feel like. So but, anyway, you're still reading that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to like get you sidetracked. Yeah. But I did. S- still reading that and it's good. But I did finish uh, the book of poetry I was reading by Wendell Berry called Leavings and that was really good. I gave it a four out of five stars on Goodreads. But it's so hard to, like, rate a book of poetry because it's a collection and, like, you know, inevitably there are going to be things you like better than others. And, um, yeah, it's just hard to rate books of poetry because yeah. there, like, there are definitely a lot of five out of five star poems in there. Mm-hmm. But then there are some that I didn't really care for. Right. But it's, like, still as a collection as a whole – I enjoyed it, and I don't know. It's hard to read. It's or it's hard to rate poetry. So. Yeah, but so yeah, I'm, that was really good. A lot of poetry just goes over my head too. So I feel like I'm not like I have no right to rate someone's poetry. Well, I think 
I mean, sometimes I definitely think like you can get lost in the metaphor or because it may not be as clear um, when you're not the writer, but I, I think a lot of poetry, it's just, it's, it's something you have to read differently than yeah. like a regular book. You can't just read it like you're reading a novel because you have to go slowly absorb it. Sometimes even saying it out loud can like help, mm -hmm. you know, get the rhythm and understand more of what, how it's, uh, you know, like what the formed and is. yeah, but it, it's, you know, it's meant to be re reflective and mm -hmm. poetic. And so it's like, there can be a lot of meaning in just, um, the certain words chosen and, uh, whatnot. So, yeah. But anyways, cool. That's, that's Good my, my book club. Yep. So I don't know what I'm going to read next as far as poetry. Actually, I'm probably going to read a book called living things next. Um, and I think it's by Ann Porter, but we're, I'm reading that with my friend Daniel. And oh. so we're going to go through that together and then talk about it. But and that's a book of poetry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I always like to have a book of poetry going yeah. Yeah. at the same time. So yeah. Anyways. Me, me too. Yeah, that's <laughs> not true. No, it's not. <laughs> I wish I was that smart. Um, well, yeah, I'm still plugging along with Dream Big. I've got to be honest, these last couple of weeks, I don't know what it is. I just haven't had very much motivation to read. Um, like, I just maybe reading like a chapter every other day, which is not very much um, compared to what I've been doing. But I'm at the very end, like I'm very close to finishing the book and I've kind of realized I think I've I've been reading it wrong in a way because it's broken up into like a couple separate chunks and like this last portion is called Take Action. So it's all about like everything we just talked about and learned now start taking action. So like figuring mm -hmm. out what your dreams are, like what's holding you back from your ambitions, those kind of things. I can't remember what he called each chunk right now, but... Uh, I was like, man, maybe I should have been like journaling and reflecting as I was going. Like, I've just kind of been soaking it in and taking notes on a, do a Google Doc of like quotes that I really like that he has shared. But I haven't really, I don't know, been very reflective <laughs> about like everything. So I think I'm probably going to have to go back and like maybe do that a little bit once I actually yeah. fully finish the book. But sometimes I think though too if you're going through a book, like the first time you're going through it, um, you can kind of get caught up in trying to do all the things or think about all the things they're saying. Yeah. And then you get kind of like sidetracked and yeah. So sometimes it can be good to get the whole understanding mm -hmm. and then go back and be like, okay, this is what I want to reflect on in mm -hmm. each thing. Thanks for making me feel better. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm here for. Okay. Anywho. I do have some quotes, though, that I was going to share just to prove to you all that I'm reading it instead of just saying it for like the last three or four weeks that I'm reading it. Um, one of them is just fill your days with dozens of small intentional acts of love. And I really liked that. Hmm. Um, he gives like he gives different examples, too. But I was just like, that should be something that I live by, um, because I think a lot of times I blow things out of proportion and I'm like I have to do these really big grand things to show people I love them but it can just be very small intentional things that are even more meaningful sometimes too so um that was one and then this one really stuck out to me <laughs> and well I'm just gonna read it and then I'll explain it says I'm He's talking about Jesus and like the Lord when he says he. So he says, I'm certain he's not asking you to mimic someone else's ideas, desires, and dreams. Sure, be inspired by the lives other people are living and riff on them if it helps you get clarity. But as sweet Maria tells me all the time, keep your eyes on your own paper. And Maria is his wife. Mm -hmm. And so he like basically is just saying don't compare yourself to someone else and also don't try to mimic what someone else is doing because you think that's what you should be doing. And there's actually like another podcast that I like to listen to. It's called Walk in Love. And um, one of the hosts, he always says, don't let the internet tell you who to be. And that's like something that he's sort of been tripped up on a, like for a while. It's like he 
he like would try to like morph himself or transform himself into who he thought people wanted him to be based on like what he was seeing other people on the internet doing. Mm -hmm. And he just felt like he was failing miserably when he did that. And so when he stopped doing that, he was like, I'm being myself and that's what matters most. And I constantly feel like I need to hear that because I do have this like, insecurity within myself that like people aren't going to like me if I'm myself or like I'm not going to be good enough or worthy enough or x y and z and so I will try to like look at what other people do and I'm like well other people like them so like maybe if I act like that or maybe if I do that or dress like that or whatever then like I don't know people will accept me but Obviously, he's talking primarily about like your dreams and your ambitions here, but I think that it's something that I can apply to mm-hmm. all areas of my life. Mm-hmm. That's um, a good one. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a whole page of them. I could just keep going, but I won't because for the rest of our episode, we would just like to spit some wisdom at you guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Who am I? What am I saying? <laughs> We thought it'd be fun to just share some quotes that have been meaningful to us or that we have like read over the years that have been transformative. And Mm -hmm. um, you have more than I do, which I think is great because you don't talk enough on this podcast. Okay. (laughs) Well, I mean, let's let's be real. You're you're more reserved than I am in general. And I get to hear your beautiful brain all the time, but not everybody does. Um, so why don't I share mine first and then you can go ahead and close us out with yours. Okay. All right. So my first one is, I actually don't really know who it's by. I'll be honest. I found it on Pinterest one time, (laughs) but it inspired one of my tattoos. So hopefully it's a real well-known quote. I mean, I think it is. Um, so my tattoo is a sunflower with the stem Um, Instead of like a regular stem, it spells out the word bloom in cursive. And my mom and I got matching tattoos. So she has the exact same one. And the quote that inspired it was a flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. So kind of tying along with what I just said. Yeah. um, I'm sensing a theme. Yeah. My whole life, I feel like that is, I have kind of struggled with this like insecurity of like, well, if I'm myself, people won't care about me or like me or whatever. And so sometimes I do find myself comparing myself to another person or even thinking like, well, if I was like them, then my life would be better. If I was like them, I'd be more lovable or whatever, like X, Y, and Z. Um, But my mom is someone who I feel like has always been very steady and sharing the truth of like, it doesn't matter what the person next to you is doing or how they're acting like you were created um, with a purpose and in a very special way like you are unique and you are valuable and like you need to let that shine and I feel like she really helped me as a young girl like to try to avoid comparing myself too much to others I mean I did like that happened I'm not saying it was like this perfect thing but Mm -hmm. um she always just brought me back to like the truth of like you don't need to be like competing with other people. You don't need to be comparing yourself to other people. You just need to bloom where you are and is who you are. And um, so, yeah, I like that I have this reminder on my arm to like if I am getting tripped up, like, no, you don't need to compete with the person next to you. You don't even need to try to be the person next to you. You just need to bloom. Um, and then my second one is by an author named Annie Dillard. It's from one of her books. I've never read it. Um, I actually learned of this quote when I was in college because I was an RA in one of our dorms and we chose this as like the theme for the year that we wanted to focus on as a staff and then also like hopefully try to incorporate into like the culture of our floors. Um, And it's a very simple, small portion from this book Um, but it's how we spend our days is of course how we spend our lives so it's something that's always stuck with me through the years Um, like this concept of am I living intentionally and am I spending each day in the way that like will benefit how I want my life to be so like you know uh, if I eat a 
bunch of cheeseburgers and ice cream every day, what's going to be the result of that? Oh, I'm going to be unhealthy. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to feel good. I'm not going to be like in shape or whatever. So like that's an example, but more of like, am I spending my time and am I giving like my mental energy to things that are the way that I want my life to be or the way that I want to live my life? And are the decisions that I'm making every single day like reflective of the goals that I have, you know? So like if I want to be a good mom, which I do, like that is one of my number one goals is to be a good mom. Well, if I'm living my life every day and I'm not like actively engaging with my son or taking care of him or taking care of myself, like, well, then I'm not going to be a good mom. Like I'm not going to be in that place. Like we had to be intentional about how we spend our days because that shapes what our life looks like. Mm -hmm. And um, recently I've been just like kind of feeling like a little off and a little like, I don't know, iffy. And I feel like I've been lacking a lot of discipline in different areas. And I know I shared this a couple weeks ago when we did the whole like, why do I feel funky episode? Um, One area in particular is like working out. And it's not like I'm like going to the gym every day for 60 minutes and like doing crazy workouts. Like that's never been my thing. Um, But I have started to implement it like a little more consistently But the last couple weeks, I really haven't. I mean, we're outside all the time. We're walking like I'm active, but I'm not like doing more. And that's an area that I really would like to be more disciplined in because like I know that it'll shape my life in a more positive way. And if I want to like spend my days taking care of my son and my future children and like being engaged with them, what I'm doing right now will influence that and will impact that. So like, I don't want to be like 40 and being like, Oh, I can't keep up with my kids because like I didn't take care of myself up like at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just trying to like be more intentional and be more proactive Uh, because like how we spend our days is how we spend the rest of our lives Mm -hmm. um and so that's just that's one area but even just like um being better about communicating i i struggle a lot with expressing how i feel because well i'm probably a number of reasons some i may not even know but like (laughs) i just feel like oh i don't i don't want to like burden someone with that i don't want to bother someone or I don't want to seem like a bother but then like it builds up like sometimes I'll just have like these feelings and they build up and they build up and they build up and I never like address it and then I get to a point where I'm like my gosh why am I in such a bad mood or something and it's like well you've been letting this fester and this fester and this fester and I just don't want to like keep living like that so I know like I have to actively start making changes and how I communicate like with you or with other people too Mm -hmm. so that like years from now I'm not like just still a poor communicator (laughs) um and like even in my walk with the Lord like we talked last week about the importance of worship being a lifestyle and I genuinely do feel like I have a posture of worship in like having um like a heart of thankfulness every day. And I do feel like I, I commune with the Lord every day. Like I talk to him and I pray. Um, I, I want to be though more intentional in having like set aside quiet time with him. And this is kind of leading into what I, an, an active challenge I'm giving myself um, to try to like implement these things that I'm talking about, like where I want more discipline because it's very hard for me to find like the time in my day that I can be quiet with God. Um, Cause I have a son that I is at home with me all the time um, or you're here, which is not a bad thing, but it's like, okay, at the end of the night, then I genuinely do want to like spend time with you too. Cause we haven't seen each other all day or I'm falling asleep on the couch cause I'm exhausted or whatever. So I have a girl that I follow on Instagram and she briefly talked about this like thing that she did a little challenge for herself 
where she did the three W's in the morning. She woke up before all of her kids and she did the word water and working out. And I know that sounds super cheesy, but she said like discipline in one area leads to discipline in the other. So if you're like struggling to be disciplined, like reading the word, maybe also start with being disciplined in like working out try all these things together and you're more likely to feel like motivated to keep the discipline going in all of those areas. And then she threw water in because I guess you need to say it's it's important to be hydrated, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) Um, I don't think I struggle with that, but can't be bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving myself this challenge for the week because I'm starting small. I don't want to like get too crazy here to... I wake up every morning before I have to start work for the day and to spend time in the word while drinking my water and also to work out at least three days this week for the working out because like I said, (laughs) starting small Um, because like I just don't want to keep living my life feeling like this is cycle of I just feel iffy and I just feel yucky and I really can't put words to it, but I know that there's some stuff going on that I'm not being disciplined about and that could potentially be why I'm feeling iffy. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Um, And so when like you brought up the idea of like sharing a quote that was important to us, I'm like, well, this one's always stuck with me and I feel like I'm not applying it. (laughs) at all like I don't always think about like the intentionality of is what I'm doing today impacting the rest of my life and my future for good or for bad um so you can hold me accountable to that okay because I know you'll be I mean, I won't be getting up to make sure you're awake, but <laughs> no, but you'll be nudging me when my alarm goes off at 5 a.m. Yeah, and instead of like turn it me saying turn it off, you could like you always are like just turn it off, and you could be like get up. How you spend <laughs> your days is how you sure spend your life. Guy, that's gonna go well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, I I do really well when I give myself like parameters for like a specific challenge or something. I don't know why that makes a difference in my brain, but it does. So I feel like, okay, I'm doing this for the week. Let me see how I feel at the end of the week. And then hopefully I'll just be motivated enough to continue to do it. And maybe it'll just become like a habit. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm done rambling. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We will. Is it my turn? Yeah. Um, So I have a few here, I guess. I just pulled from some books and things that I have read or well yes i've read um i don't <laughs> you know what the or to was them gonna be because well, i don't people listen I, to books yeah i can't though i i don't uh do well with audiobooks um my mind wanders too much anyways um so the first one i have is from a book called the inklings i believe it's by humphrey carpenter um and it's about c.s lewis and tolkien um and the the group they had uh called the inklings where they would share you know what they're working on and um give feedback and all that stuff um and it's uh, one person a part of that group was charles williams and um this is a quote from that well it's it's from the book it's a paraphrase of charles williams's father uh, it, something he told his son, um, and it is, one should never defend one's opinions by exaggeration or distortion of the facts. Um, and I, I read this in, uh, I, th- I looked it up. It was January of 2015 is when I finished this. I was going to say, is this from your Rolodex thing that you made, kind of? Yeah, and I, I haven't kept up with that, but no, I had the it was quote a really there. cute That's idea. That's how I found it. Ryan, um, when we were dating, you like... You you went out and bought like little billfolds and index cards, and you would write down like quotes of that yeah. you liked from books. And, and then the idea was to then categorize them and yeah. then be able to find them quickly when I well, it worked out to. for now. Well, yeah, I found this one, um, <laughs> but now I just pretty much mark the book and then I write the page number in the beginning of the book. Um, but anyway, this is a quote that it's just stuck with me for a long time. Um, obviously since 2015, but, um, it's also very timely. I feel like Mm -hmm. now, um, 
just given the way uh our culture and world uh is and but um beyond that like i just think it's it's such a simple statement um but it it has so much value to Mm -hmm. it um and um even in like my own life as far as um like if if i feel like god's challenging me or like trying to show me something that i need to change or a sin or whatever it is um it's really easy to exaggerate or distort quote unquote facts and like be like oh well it's not that bad or i don't really need to do this exactly you know what whatever god may be saying to me <laughs> um and uh so it's 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 just easy to like you know dis- distort something or exaggerate something um and then not change or not not really do a you know, God's calling you to do or wants you to do. Um, and I just think that even in that personal level, um, to keep this in mind of like, am I actually like, when I look in the mirror, am I actually seeing the true mirror? Am I seeing some exaggerated version of myself or some Mm -hmm. distorted version of myself and just, you know, constantly be praying for that, um, that, view of myself that god sees Mm -hmm. um that is like not uh distorted by my own selfish desires and things yeah Um, i don't know if that makes sense but it does but i think it's it's just a beautiful quote that holds so much weight and value and we could probably all get along a lot better if we did less exaggerating and distorting of things yes amen but so that's my first one. Um, starting off strong, I guess. <laughs> that's a challenging one, too. It is. Because that's it a is. lot harder to do it's, than... It's harder said than... It's easier said it's easier than done, said for than sure. It. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so important. It's something I constant Like, I literally have thought about this so much over the years since I've read this. Um, in anything. Even, even um, when I am falling uh prone or i'm you know judging someone or something i i even think like am i exa- am i exaggerating this like even in my own anger or frustration am i exaggerating and distorting What's the facts actually happening? to make to to uh just like justify fuel my own anger yeah or justify my frustration or anger mm-hmm. and um and yeah, it's so easy to fall victim to that and well not fall victim. That makes me seem like I'm not, but like it's so easy to give into that. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah. Anyways, that's that. Um and then let's see, for my next one, I guess we'll go we'll go to Wendell. <laughs> uh since I talked about him already. Good old Wendell. Good old Wendell. And this is from a poem of his. Um, but I think it's just a beautiful like reminder. Um, and this poem was about, it's called Manifesto, the Mad Farmer Liberation Front. Um, it's kind of a (laughs) weird title. A little bit. But, um. Very different from our lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, well, he's a farmer. Um, but he, uh, he's mainly talking about, like, um, not getting caught up in the, uh, the machine that our culture is and this constant desire for money like greed and money and and to to get more power and we always have to be climbing a ladder and we should always be improving and bettering like our society you know our ourselves in our society and all this stuff like stuff like that it's he's kind of you know it's speaking against that Mm -hmm. is what this poem is um but he has this these lines in it that say he says so friends every day do something that won't compute Love the Lord, love the world, work for nothing, take all that you have and be poor. Love somebody who does not deserve it. Mm. And it's just just such a good reminder. And it's so, like, that's Jesus. Like a lot of what he was saying. And, um, you know, it's very Mm countercultural, you know, to, to work for nothing and 
I mean, take all that you have and be poor. Love somebody who does not deserve it. I mean, if there's one thing we don't want to do as a culture, it's love someone who doesn't deserve yeah, it. Yeah, or give up our stuff. Yeah. Like, people, you know, right. hold very tightly to, like... And I just love how he says, do every day, do something that won't compute. And I think it's that like, it's so that way you, you don't get comfortable Mm -hmm. living in this, um, false kingdom. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, you can be, it, it can shake you loose of that, that, uh, lifestyle that's so easy to fall into and that culture, our culture. For sure. That is so easy to be um, to be driven by instead of the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. So that's Wendell. He's he's pretty good. Highly recommend him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he's a little. I like I said, <laughs> I'm not good with poetry, but so sometimes I read his stuff and I'm like, what? <laughs> that's that's on me. That's not on Wendell. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> um, the next one I'll read is. It's from, oh, I never said that. Well, that poem was originally published, I believe, in something, another book of his poetry. But the one I read it in was The Piece of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. It's a collection of uh, poems pulled from all a bunch of his other collected works. So it's kind of like a repackaging of various things. It's kind of, it's like, you know, some of his best stuff mm-hmm. is in here. I It's really great. If, if you're looking for a place to start with Wendell Berry poetry, the Piece of Wild Things is a good one. We'll link it in the show notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the next book uh, is For All God's Worth by N.T. Wright. Uh, the subtitle is True Worship and the Calling of the Church. Um, and here's the quote. Because of the cross, being a Christian or being a church does not mean claiming that we've got it all together. It means claiming that God's got it all together and that we are merely, as Paul says, those who are overwhelmed by his love. Mm. And I just love how um, it puts the focus back on God. Yeah. I think you read that to me when you were reading that book. I could have. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's 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 one of my favorite quotes from this book Um, just because it is so we like to try to act like we've got it all together when it's really God. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're here, the only reason we are Christians and, uh, you know, come together and whatever, it's like, it's God. Yeah. It's not us. Or have anything good in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just always pointing it back to him. And, um, it's, I think, you know, when we, I don't know, I was going to say it's, Christians get called hypocrites a lot because we are Mm -hmm. at times and but I think if you live your walk with God one claiming that he's got it all together that this is all because of God not because of us and that we are it and living a Christian walk overwhelmed by love Mm -hmm. like if that's actually how it looks which it should be I think Mm -hmm. and like I can't I just it's so it's like you know, uh, uh, waves of love just flowing over everything that you come in contact with because you're overwhelmed by it, and mm-hmm. that's just gonna pour out into everything else. I don't know. It's yeah. it's pretty good image. Feels like a song coming on. Maybe. Yeah. Get a jingle going here. <laughs> jingle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll go. With, okay, the next one. I'm just kind of flying through these. You I had have, five you quotes. You have a lot of theologians that you're quoting, which is amazing. And I was like, bloom where you're planted. Well, those are good. <laughs> not bloom where you're planted. That's not what it was, but yeah. It's still good. It doesn't matter where I it came know. from. I know. Um, this one is from Eugene Peterson from his book, Eat This Book, <laughs> which is... <laughs> did you talk about that already? I did. This was in my... We talked about this when we did the... Book Brook Club. Club Extraordinaire. Yeah. So, um, it's a great book. And there, this one, I I knew I wanted to read some a quote from this book. I had the hardest time trying to figure out what I wanted to read because there's Cause so, there many, so many, so much good stuff in this. Um, highly recommend it. So this is like a little sample, a little 
just imagine this quote with a toothpick on a napkin and <laughs> like you're getting cocktail a little, hour getting a little sample <laughs> at the supermarket yeah um uh, what an image you just put in everyone's mind <laughs> yeah so and then you just want you want to go buy it so anyways um yeah so i'll read it here um print technology i'm giving i'm reading above what i actually marked i'm just gonna say that too so that way it gives you a little context um so that's why i start with print technology <laughs> okay um print technology a wonderful thing in itself has put millions and millions of bibles in our hands but unless these bibles are embedded in the context of a personally speaking god and a prayerfully listening community we who handle these bibles are at special risk if we reduce the Bible to a tool to be used, the tool builds up calluses on our hearts. Mm. And the the part I like marked that I really like is if we reduce the Bible to a tool to be used, the tool builds up calluses on our heart. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I needed to read that whole yeah that did help bit to give, give context. context. But um, I just think it's such a good example of like it's just good imagery for um you know the the misuse of the bible Mm -hmm. um and how it can build calluses on our hearts just like a tool would on a hand like a hammer or whatever would you know the more you use it the more you use the tools it's going to build calluses on your hands um and it's like tools are good things but uh well when used used inappropriately yeah they can be destructive right and um and I think too, just the fact like him calling, like making the Bible a tool in that scenario is so wrong too. It's like the fact that you want to, like that we sometimes want to use the Bible as a tool is, is inappropriate in and of itself because I think what you mean is like bend. using it against people as a tool. Right. Cause like in my mind, I feel like I would view it as like a tool of like, using it for myself well that's what i mean but i mean i think the problem what i'm trying to say with the with the when we use the bible as a tool in any capacity even i think to benefit ourselves it's just that us trying to take the role of god because we are now trying to become the builder instead of we're trying to become the god the creator the one in control the one choosing what gets built the one choosing because you could be building a good thing Mm -hmm. but if it's not the right thing then it could in you know inevitably cause destruction or be it's it's just like if you take it and come like with the um parable of like the building a house on sand Mm -hmm. as opposed to the rock yeah it's like well you could build a house is a good thing right but when you make the wrong decision of building it on sand it becomes a bad thing because then when it falls down it can damage things and hurt people and it'll crumble and um whereas building it on the rock you know uh it's safe it's gonna be you know that's the right place to build a home yeah (laughs) is on a structurally sound place and so i think that's like i think what i pulled from the quote was not only does it callous us to use the bible as a tool but it's also us trying to take control. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If that makes sense, because the, it does. Because the Bible and that God that is all. like it's a living thing. It's yeah, God's word speaking to us. But we so often try to use it to build our own kingdoms, mm. to build uh, you know our own uh, to manipulate and to tear down even to tear down things and people and in reality what we need to and this is part of why it was so hard to pick one quote from here Mm because there's so many things that even tie together because he talks about like the bible and the word of god is not something that um like that we take and use but we submit to it's something Mm -hmm. we give ourselves to we submit to it Mm -hmm. um and so I think that helps. Yeah. To anyway, just read the book. Okay. Just read the rest. I tried once. <laughs> it's good. It, I did get far. It's so good. It's so good. But it's something you should like. It's you'll want to read it and like and slow reflect. and reflect and things like that. It's not like 
it's not gonna be a fast read yeah um but it's really good for me it's very slow i started a couple years ago i think i made it to page three <laughs> i fell asleep what can well, i say you, you know, i fell asleep a lot you, that's yeah that doesn't necessarily speak to the quality that's gonna of be something. on my gravestone <laughs> she, <laughs> she fell slept asleep a lot, a lot. <laughs> um all right and then my last quote is from uh a book by frederick beekner the hungering dark Mm. Uh, and it's just a collection of essays that he wrote um like all they're all kind of like little mini sermons i guess um but this is i just love this quote um and the context to which he's speaking is the um the birth of jesus in the main the manger scene okay um he says, if holiness and the awful power and majesty of God were present in this least auspicious of all events, this birth of a peasant's child, then there's no place or time so lowly and earthbound, but that holiness can be present there too. You have to, can you read that again? Yep. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, here we go. If holiness and the awful power and majesty of God were present in this least auspicious of all events, this birth of a peasant's child, then there is no place or time so lowly and earthbound, but that holiness can be present there too. Ah, oh, I like that. Yeah. It's just so like, uh, it's because it's, it's, yeah, it's just like, and it just gives so much like, um, I don't know, just so much comfort mm -hmm. to know like, yeah that moment was so holy yeah there was so much holiness there yet it was the most unexpected of places yeah the the dirtiest you know, dirty, like in a stable with animals yeah you're not in like you're by yourself mm -hmm. you're with some animal yeah it's like it's a it's not a great place to be you know yeah and yet the our king mm -hmm. was born there yeah a peasant a peasant's child as you know, Frederick Beekner put it and yeah. it's just like, yeah, there's, it's yet God was there and Which, that moment was holy. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it's also humbling because I think it's easy to be like, to look at certain things or situations, um, that like I am distant from mm -hmm. and, you know, not see them in the light of God's holiness and, and, and that like, like as if God couldn't be there mm -hmm. with those people or in those moments, mm -hmm. whatever they may be. Um, it just, rem it's a good reminder too, for me, not only is it a comfort for me for when I'm in those kinds of places, yeah, but it's, it's a good reminder of humility and like, um, of when I see those things and want to judge and like, well, how could God be that? I mean, Mm -hmm. God's not in that. Like that's weird. But really, God is probably there because He comes in the most unlikely of places, like mm -hmm. a manger. Yeah. So I don't know. I like it. That was a good one. I really like that one. Um, Yours were all so deep. Well, I mean, I they were just things. I mean, it's a good thing. It's not yeah. a bad thing. They're they're good, good, uh, good writers. So they are. <laughs> Very brilliant people, too. Yes, yes, they um, are. But yeah, that's all I got. That was my last one. I like it. So. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we're going to do a new segment. Yeah. So we'll so, start to introduce a new segment every week with the quote of the week. Could be from something we read, something we hear. Could be from our very own mouths. Yeah, well, that's probably <laughs> unlikely. It's most likely going to be... <laughs> It could be from anything. It could be from a song or a movie or, or a, a book show. or a show or anything. But yeah. we decided we're going to start ending all our podcasts with, quote of the week. with a quote of the week. And to kick that off, we shared a handful yeah. with yeah. you in Something this episode. Something to inspire you. Yeah. So. Get you f getting all the feels going. Yep. Anticipation sure. for what's to come. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you put up with me. <laughs> well, if you haven't already, make sure you have um, followed us on Instagram at By Grace We Live Pod. And if you haven't already, subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Give us a rating or review. Let us know what you think of everything. And as always, thank you again for joining us for another week. And we are looking.
looking forward to seeing you again next week.